here we have a model of the arm. We're going to start up top here with the deltoid, this muscle originating at the clavicle and the scapular spine, inserting at the deltoid tuberosity. I'm going to take that off so we can see a little bit better. Next we have the coracobrachialis, which is this muscle, and it goes underneath the biceps a little bit. That muscle originating at the coracoid process of scapula, inserting at the shaft of humerus. Then we have the teres major, that's this muscle right here. Originating at the inferior angle of the scapula, inserting at the proximal humerus. Then we have the supraspinatus, that's this, above the scapular spine. Originating at the supraspinous fossa, inserting in the greater tubercle of the humerus. We have the infraspinatus, originating at the infraspinous fossa, inserting at the greater tubercle of the humerus. Then we have the subscapularis on the underside here, originating at the subscapular fossa, inserting at the lesser tubercle of humerus. And then we have the teres minor, visible right here. Originating at the lateral border of scapula, inserting at the greater tubercle of humerus. And here we have the biceps brachii. There are two heads. We have the long head, which is the lateral head, in originating at the coracoid process of scapula. Then we have the short head, the medial head, originating at the glenoid cavity, and both inserting at the radial tuberosity. And then we have the triceps right here, these guys. So we have the lateral head right here, and that's originating at the proximal humerus. Then we have the long head right here, and that's originating at the scapula. And then we have the medial head originating at the proximal humerus. And all three of those are inserting at the olecranon process of the ulna. And then, come back to this side, we remove this. We have the brachialis, originating at the mid-humerus, inserting at the coronoid process of ulna. And then, down here, we see the pronator teres. It dives deep in here, originating at the medial epicondyle of humerus and coronoid process of ulna, inserting at the radius. And then we can come underneath real quick. We can see the supinator right here. This is underneath muscles we will get to. Originating at the lateral epicondyle of humerus, inserting at the radius. And then on the back we have the enconius, this triangular muscle right here. Originating at the lateral epicondyle of humerus, inserting at the olecranon process of ulna. Next we have the brachioradialis. Originating at the lateral epicondyle of humerus, inserting at the styloid process of radius. Then right here we have the flexor carpi radialis. Originating at the medial epicondyle of humerus, inserting at metacarpals 2 and 3. Then we have the palmaris longus, this muscle going right here to the middle of the palm. Originating at the medial epicondyle of humerus, inserting at the palmar aponeurosis. Then we have the flexor digitorum superficialis, right here. It's called superficialis because underneath there is a flexor digitorum profundus. That muscle, flexor digitorum superficialis, originates at the medial epicondyle of humerus, inserts at the distal phalanges of metacarpals 2 through 5. And then we have the flexor carpi ulnaris, originating at the medial epicondyle of humerus, inserting at metacarpal 5. Then we have the, on the other side, to the extensor side, we have the extensor carpi ulnaris, originating at the lateral epicondyle of humerus, inserting at metacarpal 5. Then we have the extensor digitorum right here, originating at the lateral epicondyle of humerus, inserting at digital phalanges of metacarpal 2 through 5. And then we have a little branch right here going to the pinky. This is the digiti binami muscle. And then we have the extensor carpi radialis brevis, 
That's this one right here. And we have the extensor carpi radialis longus. Both of those originate at the lateral epicondyle of humerus. Longus inserts at metacarpal 2, and the brevis inserts at metacarpal 3. And then we have the abductor pollicis longus, originating at the proximal radius and ulna, inserting at metacarpal 1. And we have the extensor pollicis brevis, originating at mid-radius, inserting at proximal phalanx of metacarpal 1. If we remove the muscles back here, the extensor muscles, we can see a little bit more of the supinator up top here, more of the abductor pollicis longus, and the extensor pollicis brevis right there. We can also see a little bit clearer the flexor digitorum profundus. Here we have a couple models of the legs. We will be using this model primarily, but we'll be showing a couple things on this larger model. One thing I want to show on the larger model is the psoas major and the iliacus. Next, we have the gluteus maximus originating at the ilium and sacrum, inserting at the iliotibial tract and proximal femur. Underneath, for this model, this will be the gluteus medius originating at the iliac crest, inserting at the greater trochanter. And then underneath all of that, we have the gluteus minimus originating at the ilium, inserting at the greater trochanter. And then we have the piriformis right here, originating at the sacrum, inserting at the greater trochanter. Next we have the tensor fascia latte, this muscle, originating at the anterior superior iliac spine, inserting at the iliotibial tract. And then we have the iliotibial tract, or the IT band, originating at the anterior superior iliac spine, inserting at the lateral condyle of tibia. And coming around we have the pectineus, right here, this small muscle right in there, underneath this vasculature and nerves. That's originating at the superior ramus of pubis, inserting at the lesser trochanter. And the most medial muscle, we have the gracilis. Here we have a poor rendition of the iliacus, originating at the iliac fossa, inserting at the iliopsoas muscle. Right here would be the psoas major, as seen on the other model, originating at the transverse process of lumbar vertebrae, inserting at the iliopsoas muscle. And then where they come together, right here, is the iliopsoas muscle, originating at the iliacus and psoas major muscles, inserting at the lesser trochanter. On this model, we can see the inguinal ligament, and we'll consider the iliopsoas beneath the inguinal ligament, and the psoas major in the iliacus above the inguinal ligament. We have the adductor longus, the originating at the inferior ramus of pubis, inserting at the linea aspera. And we have the adductor magnus, both of these are the adductor magnus, originating at the inferior ramus of pubis, inserting at the linea aspera. And if we turn this back over, we have the quadriceps tendon right here, coming from the tendon of the rectus femoris. And the quadriceps tendon is originating at the rectus femoris muscle, inserting at the base of the patella. Then we have the rectus femoris, this muscle right here, originating at the anterior inferior iliac spine, inserting to the tibial tuberosity. And we have the vastus intermedius, which is underneath. It's right here. And then we have the vastus lateralis and the vastus medialis, those three are originating at the linea aspera and inserting at the tibial tuberosity. Then we have the sartorius, the longest muscle in the body, originating at the anterior superior iliac spine, inserting to the medial condyle of tibia. And if we turn this over, we have the semitendinosis on the medial side. And we have the semimembranosis just underneath, right here, this muscle, and underneath the semitendinosis. Both of those are originating at the ischial tuberosity and inserting at the medial condyle of the tibia. Then we have the biceps femoris. We have the long head on top. And if we take this away, we'll take both of those away. We have the short head underneath. The long head inserting or originating at the ischial tuberosity, the short head originating at the linea aspera, 
both inserting at the lateral condyle of tibia and head of fibula. Then, if we move a little bit further down, underneath here, we can see the popliteus. And that muscle is originating at the lateral condyle of femur, inserting at the posterior tibia. And then on the front, we have the tibialis anterior, originating at the lateral condyle of tibia, inserting at metatarsal one. Then we have the extensor digitorum longus, originating at the lateral condyle of tibia, inserting at distal phalanges of metatarsals two through four. And then on the side, we have the fibularis longus, which is this muscle right here. This model has a poor depiction of the separation between fibularis longus and brevis. Brevis is technically purely underneath, but it looks like one muscle in this model. So the fibularis brevis is directly underneath here and it, we can identify it based on its change in striation direction. Fibularis longus originating at the head of fibula, inserting at metatarsal one. Fibularis brevis originating at the fibula, inserting at metatarsal five. Then on the back, we have the gastrocnemius. We have the medial head here and the lateral head here. The medial head inserting or originating at the medial condyle of tibia, the lateral head originating at the lateral condyle of tibia, both inserting at the calcaneus. We'll take this off. Underneath is the soleus, that's this muscle right here. It's this whole thing here, and it's this little bit right here. That is originating at the tibia, inserting at the calcaneus. And here we have the calcaneal or Achilles tendon. It's originating at the muscles of the calf, inserting at the calcaneus. Then we have the plantaris, which I'll show on this muscle, or this model. We can see the tendon of the plantaris and the plantaris muscle right there. That originating at the lateral condyle of femur, inserting at the calcaneus. And then we have the tibialis posterior, originating at the tibia and the fibula, inserting at the tarsals and metatarsals. Then we have the flexor hallucius longus, originating at the fibula, inserting at distal phalanx of metatarsal one. And we have the flexor digitorum longus, originating at tibia, inserting at distal phalanges of metatarsal two through four. It's a little counterintuitive that the flexor hallucius longus would be more lateral to the flexor digitorum longus, seeing as the hallux, the big toe, is more medial, but that's how they are. This model right here is around the pelvic girdle right here, and this model gives us a better view of the iliacus, the psoas major, and the only view of the psoas minor is this muscle right here originating at T12.